Hello, thanks uh, for coming to my lab here. I have uh, I have a number of Bacharach products here. I want to do some testing for uh, refrigerants. My goal here is to demonstrate how sensitive the Bacharach MZ is, and, and if you're an independent grocer or a industrial place that has a large system where you're afraid of losing a lot of refrigerant. To me, this is the only refrigerant solu uh, leak detection solution to go with. It has, uh, we'll just go over to the setup here. I, this is an, an eight channel unit. I have it set up right now running three channels only. I set the zone lengths to uh, five feet, so they're very, very short. The main thing about an air sample draw system is that it has a pump inside of it that can draw through tubing up to 1200 feet away so it can go it can cover a very large area there are splitter kits where you can actually uh, take that let's say for instance that zone there and use equidistant uh, tubing lengths and and cover a much larger uh, square footage up to uh, typically up to three times the um, the pump is a long lasting pump it's a, it's a dual oscillating uh, unit typically multiple years of use out of these things and, and they're really fairly inexpensive roughly $200 uh, to replace. The key to this working well is it has a 10 inch infrared sensor involved whereby it takes a known sample of, of clean air and it compares it to samples that it's drawing in and compares that to the library of refrigerants it has inside and can tell you what part per million uh, refrigerant it's sensing. And it does it by uh, shooting an infrared beam through from one end and analyzing it on the other uh, through, through the unit. Very, very sensitive down to one part per million. To get its fresh air sample point, it gets it uh, by drawing a fresh air sample, you can either do this from outdoors or an area where you know there's no chance of refrigerant hitting it. But a typical installation is to use a carbon filter. I have one there. Um, the carbon filter has activated charcoal in it. The activated charcoal will uh, strip the halogens out of the air and give you a clean, very clean uh, sample to compare to. This unit is, it, it purges and recalibrates itself every so many minutes, every uh, cycle through pretty much. You may have seen these out in the field. This actually works the same way. It has a smaller pump in it. It has the same charcoal filter and the same uh, IR sensor. And if you're a contractor, you've seen these and want one or have one. If you are a grocer who uses a contractor, make sure your guys have one of these because it saves a lot of time and really finds leaks. So let me uh, let me get started here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a a test uh, from far away. I've measured off 18 feet here in my lab. I'm going to let off a certain amount of 134A refrigerant, which is in this can of duster spray. And I'm going to see how well and how long it takes for it to uh, hit the sensors and go off. And to see if really if any of these sensors go off. Now it's a bit unfair right now in that these zones are up high. You typically want to have them uh, you know, a foot off the ground, a foot or so off the ground because refrigerant drops. So in this case I'll, I'll do the test in a few different ways. I have a sensing point down here and um, I have the two up here which are uh, one is in the one's a standard a standard pickup point and one I have in a waterproof enclosure I don't have one open right now but it's basically uh, the same thing in a, in a water tight box a gasketed box this is great for uh, you know meat prep areas things like that or a place where you're worried about getting knocked into but uh, very very effective at um, you know, extending the life. The last thing you want to do is pull water into one of these systems. There is a um, there is a filter inside. I'll show you one here. This is a um, this actually has a Gore-Tex membrane in it, and 
it, it it's a uh, water resistant, it's waterproof for a while, uh, and all the air samples flow through this. This is sort of the last line of defense, and if if water gets in there or dirt gets in there, it stops it. Now, if you suck in a lot of water over time, it can get through, and and that sensor ends up uh, being no good. You don't want dust or dirt inside that sensor. Let me show you something though. This is actually a used filter. I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but you see the one side is very dirty compared to the other. That's because that's a used uh, used one. This one here, you, you really want to check this out all the time. Make sure that it's good and clean. The unit itself will alarm out if you have uh, you know air restrictions, so uh, just keep that in mind. So without further ado, let me um, let me move back a little bit and I'm going to do that sensor uh, test. All right, I have the camera set up here and you can see I have the zones number one, two, three. These are also active. Um, I don't really expect them to go off on this test very soon. But because I'm going a distance and letting a lot of refrigerant go far away, I'm trying to simulate a leak that may be in an area that's not really close to the pickup point but to demonstrate how it works. Now that thing is always cycling through the zones, so it's not uncommon to have one zone get a hit and then another zone get a hit of the same leak if it's, if it's large enough. So let me, uh, let me set up my timer here first. Let that go. I'm going to stand behind the camera a bit with my duster spray. And uh, let's see what happens. Okay, there it goes. Two minutes in after uh, walking in. It's not too long. Let's see what happens here. Again, I'm sort of pushing refrigerant towards it. So because that was the first one, that went off at 38 parts per million, so we're a little bit above. That one has gone off at 34 parts per million. Now it's drawing from the low one, 23 parts per million. So you see that the refrigerant is in the air, you're not getting responses from the other ones because they're really not designed to get down to that sort of level. This is the reason, that, again, if you have a, a large amount of refrigerant that you can lose, you really want to invest in one of these things. Now we can help you at our company and appreciate it if you see this video that you do that.